Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. It's good that, uh, to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, this morning is a very unusual time and season for our church here at Pembroke Assembly of God. Of course, I'm here uh, recording this so that you guys can uh, hear the word of the Lord, the word of hope, uh, the word of encouragement to you and to your homes. Um, we'll be broadcasting uh, tomorrow. Of course, when you see this, it'll already be broadcasting. But, you know, I look around the sanctuary this morning. I've been here for a few hours already praying and praying over the pews like I always do before service and praying for each of you individually like I always do before service, praying in the Spirit. Um, you know, in the Old Testament, God had a temple for His people. In the New Testament, God has a people for His temple. And so we are, we are the church. And though the seats are empty this morning, uh, we are one church in many homes this morning. And I pray that this word sticks and finds a resting place in your heart. Let's go to the Lord and pray. God, I thank you for this moment. I thank you, God, for the, the, the uh, miracle of technology, God. And I pray and believe that this video... God will find its way into so many more homes, into so many, and your word will find its way into so many more hearts, God. You always turn around what the enemy means to harm us and make it good to the saving of many lives. And so, Lord, this morning, as I hide behind your cross, I pray, Lord, that you would use me to speak with boldness, with courage. Your word keeps whispering in my heart, echoing in my heart, fear not, for I am with you. Let there be an anointing on this time, the presence of God in our homes. God, wherever we watch this, Lord, I pray, God, that you would impact those lives for your glory. This is a moment, a time to pause, to contemplate, to look up to the heavens from where our help comes from. Lord, we face the issue, we face the problem, but we focus on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. And we give you the praise for it and the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You know, we welcome you this morning, like I said, but I have a word of encouragement for you um, found out of the book of Mark. I'm going to get to that in a moment. But, you know, the, in Job 38, it says that God came in a whirlwind. And uh, it was actually a tornado that God showed up in the middle of. And when God shows up in something that's out of control, it's so He can show us that He is in perfect control. And He is in perfect control of this situation. He's going to use this moment to bring us to our knees, to bring us to the feet of Jesus, which is the, the holiest place on earth. It's the most sacred ground that you could ever find on this earth. He's going to use this moment and turn it around to the saving of many lives. I believe that with all my heart. If you've been panicked, worried, like the world is spinning out of control, I want you to say this phrase with me. I want, there's a phrase that I want to get into your spirit. That I pray that the Holy Spirit will resonate in you as days and weeks go on in the midst of this uh, pandemic that God is in perfect control over. That phrase is real simple. It's the title of the message this morning. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. Though uh, a thousand may fall at my left, ten thousand at my right, it will not come near my dwelling place. I plead the blood of Christ over your homes, over your family's homes, and I pray that the, 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 the shield of faith would rise up inside of you and that it would quench the fiery darts of fear that want to creep in to your psyche. We need a vaccination this morning. We need a vaccination of faith. You know, because America has caught what I call the fear flu. The fear flu. The fear flu is uh, very contagious. It's driven by the media. It's driven by outside sources coming into your home. Be careful. Be mindful of what you allow into these ears. Be careful. Be mindful what you allow into your children's ears. Though we need to be informed, and I'm all about it, I'm not trying to say put your head in the sand and pretend like this is not happening. Of course, it's a scary situation. But we need to be vaccinated with faith this morning so that when you receive uh, th those negative reports, faith rises up and comes against it, and it will trigger that which is trying to cause fear in your heart, 
and say, say, God, my eyes are going to be on you. God, I'm going to lift my eyes to the heaven from where my help comes from. Some trust in horses, the Bible says. Some trust in chariots. But I am going to trust in the Lord my God. So we face the fact that we're under a pandemic, but we focus on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Praise God. I want to take you to the Word of the Lord in Mark chapter 5 and uh, <clears throat> read a few scripture there, but I don't think we can get too much of the Word of God in us. Uh, beginning in verse 21, great um, uh, segment of scripture here in the New Testament, Mark chapter 5, beginning in verse 21. I'm going to read this to you into your homes right now. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. Immediately, this synagogue leader realized who he was in the presence of. He was in the presence of the Messiah. He was in the presence of the one that had the answers to every one of his problems, every one of his concerns, every one of his issues. This leader in the synagogue fell. He knew what to do. And I'm trying to coach you up this morning. This is a huddle, if you will. Coach you up to fall at the feet of Jesus. Because that's where you're going to find your answer, where you're going to find your hope. And Jairus did just that. He fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him. He said, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. And he got the Lord's attention. He said, he, he, he fell at the Lord's feet. And Jesus, the Bible says, so the Lord went with him. Jesus went with him. And on his way to Jairus' house, a large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman who was there that had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, it's the woman with the issue of blood, she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. She was looking in the wrong places. She was f trying to find her strength in the wrong places. And then she meets Jesus. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and he touch, and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just can touch his clothes, I will be healed. And the Bible says immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. She touched something that was touching Christ. She didn't even physically touch him, but she touched something that was touching him. Can you be that person that touches Christ for your neighbor? Can you be that person that touches Christ for your family member right now? Can you be that person that's an encouraging word, a balm uh, for your family and for your friends during this crisis? Because all they need to do is reach out and touch you. Because you're touching Jesus. They will immediately sense the presence of God. I believe it with all my heart. The woman with the issue of blood was no different. The Bible says the bleeding stopped. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see, there was many people touching him, but this touch was different. You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, Who touched me? They were saying, So many people are touching you. Why are you asking now who touched you? Because this touch was different. This was a touch that produces change. This was a touch of desperation. This was a touch with, from, a, from a woman that had spent all she had, suffered for many, many years, 12 years with the same ailment. She had an issue. We all have an issue right now. We can't bury our heads in the sand and pretend that it doesn't exist. That's not faith. Faith is not pretending that something doesn't exist. We need to face the facts that we have an issue, but touch Jesus. Reach out and touch even the hem of his garment. And the Bible goes on to say, you see people crowding against you as disciples answered, yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. He knew there was a woman that touched him. This touch is a touch that produced change. You know, uh, we sing the old song, He touched me. 
Oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. That's one thing for Jesus to touch you. It's quite another for you to touch Jesus. This is a touch that produces change. She touched him. Of course Jesus will respond. Of course virtue will flow from him into you. But you got to do what it takes to reach out and touch him past your fear, beyond the current situation. I know, I understand, people are in their homes. People are doing what's called social distancing. I have people in our church right now that have been practicing social distancing for a couple of years because they lost a loved one, because they lost a husband, because they lost a wife, and they've chosen to just kind of, unfortunately, they are forced to socially distance themselves. I'm praying for you this morning that you would reach out and touch Christ. I'm praying and believing for you that Jesus would be a friend that sticks closer than a brother, and you will feel the virtue of God flow into your home and flow into your life. But Jesus kept looking around. He said, who done it? Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet. There she goes. She did the same thing that Jairus did a moment before. She came and fell at the most sacred ground on all the earth. She was trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. And I said all of that to get us to this point right here in Scripture. Verse 35. While Jesus was still speaking with some people, some people came from the house of Jairus. Remember Jairus, the synagogue leader whose daughter was dying? Your daughter is now dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? You know, instead of getting better, it got worse for her. Instead of getting better for Jairus, it got worse for him. It's always darkest before the dawn. God will show up in a moment when you can't, you can't, one plus one does not equal two to you and you can't understand, you can't figure things out. It seems like it's just getting worse. Don't fear. God is with you. Watch. Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him these words. These words I want to resonate in your heart, in your home, and to your families this morning. Don't be afraid, just believe. Don't be afraid, family of God, just believe. Just believe. You know, I'm believing that people are watching this broadcast this morning that normally would never come to our church, that normally would never step foot here. This is not about building this church. This is about bringing hope to your life, into your heart. I'm going to give you a moment at the end of the service to receive Christ as your Savior, to receive the Healer as your Lord. And God wants to say to you this morning, don't be afraid, just believe. Only believe. Hallelujah. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brothers of James. When they came to the house of the synagogue's leader, here's Jesus. Now, now, now mind you, he was on his way to, the late, to, to heal the little girl. And he was interrupted by somebody else with another problem. God, nothing is too difficult for God. Nothing is impossible for God. While you might be saying, somebody else got their healing, somebody else got their blessing, what about mine? I finally got the attention of Jesus and now he's... He's spending additional time with somebody else interrupting the progress to the house. No, God can do all things at the same time. He's a God that can heal the past, anchor your today, and secure your tomorrow, and he does it all at the same time. That's who he is. That's who he is. I don't know about you, but this is pretty good preaching this morning. This is pretty good preaching. It says... uh, He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of Jesus. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, now this is the verse of scripture I wanted to pinpoint this morning. And the King James says it very eloquently. I'm reading out of the NIV this morning. Why 
all this commotion and wailing. The King James says something like, and I'm paraphrasing, why make such a do and weep? Why, one translation says, why are you making such a big ado about nothing? Now, I'm not saying that this is nothing, and neither was Jesus, but I want to point to you and, and, and kind of underscore what Jesus was really saying here. He said, why all the commotion and wailing? Of course they were crying. Of course they were weeping. Of course they were frantic. Of course they were fearful. And Jesus stepped right into the middle of it and said, why are you weeping? What, what is the big ado? And the child is not dead, he says, but asleep. They laughed at him. And after he put them out, he took the child and father's mother and his disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took uh, her by the hand. Jesus is taking you by the hand right now, family of God, and said to her, Telethakum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. He's saying to you, he's saying to me, get up. Get up. Take a different perspective on this thing. Of course you're fearful. Of course you're frightened. Of course this doesn't make sense to you. Of course there's unanswered questions for you. But Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this is a God in whom we can trust. I choose today to put faith over fear. I choose this moment to, to allow God to feed my faith and to push back and drive out the fear that has tried to creep in. I feel, I don't know about you, I didn't think I could have church with empty seats, but I feel the presence of God this morning. I sense the anointing of the Holy Spirit this morning. Hallelujah. I want to get this phrase into you. I am not afraid. When you feel worried, when you feel afraid, when you feel panic, when you feel overwhelmed and anxious, and all those things will try to grip your heart in the days and weeks to come. I want this to rise up in your mind, to rise up in your spirit, to rise up in your heart. I am not afraid. Jesus Christ, when he said, why you make such a big ado about this, or why are you making such a big deal, why are you weeping? He wasn't, he wasn't saying, look, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. Why are you crying over somebody dying? This little girl obviously had a disease. Something happened to her. We don't know what caused her to get sick. But something did. It was very unusual for a 12-year-old girl to be laying in bed and dying. But Jesus, when he stepped in, he said, why are you making such a big commotion? What he was saying was, look, I'm not, I'm not downplaying the fact that this is a hard situation. I'm not downplaying the fact that this is a uh, uh, time to weep. There's a time for everything under the sun. But what he was saying is, I just stepped into your house. I just came to your address. I know where you live. I haven't forgotten you. You're not forsaken. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He stepped in this morning. He's stepping in right now into your situation, right into the midst of the atmosphere of fear in your life and in your heart. And he's saying, don't be afraid. Only believe. Only believe. It's a defense mechanism against fear. When you say, God's word tells me to not be afraid. This little girl lost her life. It was a tragedy. She was 12 years of age. And Jesus walked in in the hour of death had come. And, he, and, and, and we, like I said, we don't know what killed her. We don't know what caused the issue in her life. There was some unknowns there. But he said, only believe. Do not be afraid. Why do you make this ado and weep? To me, that's a strange thing for him to say. Strange thing. And if you read it at face value, you'd say, wow, is he insensitive? Doesn't he get it? Is he that separated from reality? You know, Christians can act that way sometimes. Separated from reality. Faith is not a separation from reality. Faith is taking the words that are found in this holy book and applying them to your life. Applying them to your situation. Jehoshaphat in the Old Testament. 
He was facing odds and he didn't know what to do and he cried out to God. I believe it's in the, the 20th chapter of Chronicles. He said, I don't know what to do. We're surrounded. But my eyes are on You. My eyes are on You, Jesus. Um, so Jesus was affected by this situation. But what He was saying is in your darkest moment, in your darkest uh, in desperation, choose faith over fear. He's saying, I'm here. I'm in your house. And church, I'm not preaching. Please don't get this twisted. I'm not preaching that this virus is nothing. It's serious. It's deadly. It's dangerous. But God gave us common sense to deal with it in every way that we can. And that's why we have empty seats today. We're facing the problem. But we're focusing on God. We're facing it. We're doing what we need to do. We're facing the issue at hand. But when we compare it to Jesus, this issue, this problem, this coronavirus, when we compare it to Jesus, it's nothing. He is in the house. He is in your house. If you previously did not have faith in Christ, I pray, by the end of this day, you will have received Him as your Lord and Savior and begin this journey of faith with Him. Much ado and weep. He is with us. He is for us. The spirit of fear is loosed in our society and in our nation. That spirit is doing everything that it can to cause us to worry, to feel anxious, to feel stressed out, to tell us that everything is coming to an end. Depending on which news channel you watch, they'll tell you that very thing. It's like the world is, is caving in that this is never gonna, we're never going to rebound. It's not the end, church. It's not the end. I came to tell you that, that it's not too late for America. It's not too late for your family. It's not too late for your marriage, for your children. God is not blessing this, done blessing this nation. He's not done. When you feel afraid, you have to learn to take God's Word. His Word will come up in you like a defense mechanism. When you worry... When you're, when you're all emotional and anxious, God's Word will help you say those four words. I am not afraid. Get that into your heart this morning. Rehearse that. Walk around your kitchen. Walk around your living room and say those four words. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. Pretty soon you'll sense the atmosphere change. There's power in your words. There's power in the Word of God. He said, don't be afraid, only believe. Use caution. Use wisdom. Practice social distancing. And everything that they're telling us to do with the CDC, I get that. I'm doing it personally. We made a lot of adjustments in my home. But my eyes are lifted up to the One who brought me life. My eyes are lifted up to the One that can put and will put an end to this chaos in this nation and America. He's getting our attention. He's saying to us, like He said to Jehoshaphat, lift your eyes up to Me. We are in a divine shutdown right now. This is a divine shutdown for America. And sometimes God does His greatest work in moments like this. He always does His greatest work in moments like this. There were, in the book of Numbers, there were 12 spies that went in to check out, to spy out the land, uh, the promised land, the promise that God had given to Moses and to Joshua to cross over the, uh, the Jordan into the promised land. Ten spies came back and said the giants are too big. Ten spies came back and said the issues are too many. We can never take this land. It's never going to work. Only two said that we are well able. Be part of that crew. The minority that says we are well able. I came to tell you this morning, we are well able. God is not finished with you yet. He's a finishing God. You can be confident that He who's begun a work in you will see it through to completion. This is a moment to pause. A moment to contemplate. A moment to take our eyes off the idols in our life and place them on a holy God where they belong. 
A moment for us to spend time with our families, to spend time with our children. We're so busy in America that we go here, we go there, we're rushing to this place, to that place, and, 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 and very little time spent around the, the dinner table. God wants to use this for us to take advantage and bring us back to where we needed to be all along with our eyes on Christ. Those two said we are well able. The ten said that we're doomed. The ten said that we'll never get through this. They got bitten by the fear flu. They got bitten by the fear flu. They had the fear flu. The two said we are well able. They got vaccinated with faith. I'm praying and believing that God would vaccinate you with faith this morning. And that that faith would rise up inside of you. We need power to choose faith over fear. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith in His Word. Faith in His promises. Faith in the blood of Jesus. Faith in the name that is above every name. His name is Jesus Christ. Stick your eyes on Him, the author and the finisher of your faith. He says in His Word, He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on Me. Read it. It's right there in Isaiah 26 and verse 3. He will keep you in perfect peace, family. But you got to lift your eyes to Him. Take them off the television screen for a moment. This morning, I have to be honest with you, I woke up, I was praying, and then immediately I put Fox News on. The, the reports kept coming. The reports kept coming. And I said, no, no, I can't do that anymore. I can't do it for now. I put it on Christian music and worship music began to play in my house and the whole atmosphere changed. Everything shifted. God wants us to go from worry to worship, from fear to faith. Do it. Do it for your family. Men of God, rise up and lead your family well. Women of God, rise up and lead your children well. Have faith in God. He's not finished with us yet. Fear will paralyze you. You know, I was reading the other day and I heard this. I'm not sure where I heard it, but the, uh, genetics have, have identified recently a new gene. And this gene is called SLG684. Whatever that means. SLG684. It's what the medical professionals call the worry gene. It's a medical fact. It's a worry gene, and if you have the short version of the worry gene, you are more prone to worry and be anxious than if you have the long version of the worry gene. And when I read that, when I heard that the other day, immediately I started worrying. I was worrying if I had the worry gene. I mean, it's crazy. But God is saying this morning, regardless if you have the short version or the long version, I am with you. I am for you. I care for you. Fear not. Only believe. I'll never forsake you. I'll never abandon you. I am for you. I am with you. I will never leave you. And he goes on to say that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate. And the church said a corporate amen. amen. I hear you ladies saying amen to me right now. I, see you I hear you folks saying amen to me right now. I miss you ladies. I miss you Carol and Barbara and Maureen and, and, and Janet and all of you and Georgie, Gordon, Elizabeth. The list goes on. I miss you, but I want you to be safe. We're facing this issue. We're doing it right but we're keeping our eyes on Jesus. God does not want us to live in chronic fear. Fear is the result of increased vulnerability. And we, like more than ever before, feel vulnerable right now. So of course the emotion of fear comes in, but get your Bible out. You know dusty Bibles lead to dirty lives. Do you know if you read the Word of God, the Word of God will read you? And as you begin to read the Word of God, open it up to Psalm 91, the protective psalm. That thing will begin to read you as you read it. It will identify the areas of fear in your life. 
It'll identify the areas of anxiety in your mind. And all of a sudden, a defense will rise up. It'll drive out that fear. You will feel and sense angelic protection. He says in his word, he will give his angels charge over you. And I'm praying and believing that right now. That as you begin to read Psalm 91, God would dispatch angels. There's too many unemployed angels in heaven. Up there waiting for you to call on God so that God can dispatch them into your homes. Let's get them out of the unemployment line and get them working for us this morning. God is well able. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Amen. If you read the Bible, it will read you. You know, I'm about to wrap up. Uh, I don't have an audience. I don't have people looking at their watches right now. I don't have people pacing. I don't have anybody falling asleep on me this morning. It's, I can just keep preaching and preaching and preaching. John's here filming. Thank God for Brother John coming in. He's not one of my sleepers anyways. He's always on, on point. But, but I, I want to speak this scripture into, your atmos into the atmosphere of your home. Isaiah Chapter 43 and verse 2. This needs to be spoken over our nation today. It says, When you pass through the water, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, it will not burn you. Neither shall the flame be kindled against you. And goes on to say, You are precious in my sight and I love you. He, listen, He gave me Jesus. He gave you Jesus. Jesus who carried my sorrows, who carries my sickness, who carries my death to, on His body to the cross. When people are overwhelmed, they tend to go into denial. It's like people won't even go to the doctor. If they feel something going on with them, they won't go to the doctor. They go in denial as if you hide from it, it'll go away. That's not how it works. That's not faith. Faith is not going into denial. If you start getting symptoms, I pray you never do. But if you do, don't go into denial. Don't allow fear to grip your heart. Go get checked out. Get yourself a test. Go get checked out. Don't deny the fact that something is different. Something is changing. Fear will paralyze you and will cause you to go into denial. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Everything is better with Jesus. Even the coronavirus. Even the problems you're facing right now. Financial difficulties. I got a call yesterday from one of our people. He's out of work. His beautiful wife is out of work. It's, a, it's a, a tragic situation, but we're going to band together. We're going to lock arms together. We're going to get through this as a family. We must keep our eyes on Jesus. That kind of trouble can paralyze you with fear. And, and rightfully so. It's a big deal. We must keep our eyes on the one who carried it all to the cross. His name is Jesus. Face the problem, but focus on God. This is no time to be dominated by fear. I said it last week, and I think it bears saying again, because what happens when we get dominated by fear, we, we don't just go into denial, but we go into a place of indecision. And to waver le leads to wandering. Wavering leads to wandering. The Bible says that, um, I can't remember exactly where it's at, but decisions, decisions, in the valley of decisions. Many of you are in a valley of decision right now. You know that the things around you are changing so fast, it's so fluid, that things that you counted on and trusted on, you can no longer count on and trust on. It just happened just like that. God is giving you an opportunity to make a decision for Christ this morning. I beg you, turn your eyes to Jesus. He will walk with you. He will talk with you. He'll see you through this storm. 
It's not going to wave a magic wand and all of a sudden everything goes away. But He's going to be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's going to walk you through this and faith will rise up. Fear will be driven out and you will see the end of this matter will be better than the beginning. He will not let you down, Brother John said. He won't let you down, family. And I, and I said this last week and I want to say it again. Talking about being in the, the valley of decision. It's like the, you're on a t in a 10-story building and the building is burning down. It's all smoke and flame behind you. You're on the edge of the building. You look down and you see the firemen down 10 stories below holding a big safety mat. And they're calling up to you and they're saying, Jump! Jump! We'll catch you! We'll save you! And for fear, it paralyzes you. And you stay in the building and it goes down in flames. God is saying, jump! You can trust me. I will catch you. I know this is hard. I know it's fearful. I know it's scary. I know there's so much uncertainty around you. But fall into my arms this morning. I will catch you. I will help you through this storm. I will help you through this season in your life. Compared to God, if God is for you, the Bible says, who can be against you? That was a good place for an amen. amen. Yes, amen. You have to faith it. You have to fight it. Fear not. Focus on God. He is going to be with us. We're facing the problem. But God delights in people of courage. Those two spies went in. They came back with a whole different report than the ten. Yes, they were the minority, but they said, we are well able to take this land. I'm saying to you this morning, we are well able. <clears throat> this whole thing can cause us to be crippled with fear. God is saying, if I feed the sparrows, won't I feed you? If I take care of all of nature, won't I take care of you? Say those four words. I am not afraid. Please let that get into their spirits this morning, dear God. Take this time to connect with God. As I said a moment ago, sometimes the greatest thing that can happen is for God to, do, to just shut everything down. It's a divine shutdown in our nation. The stores are consumed with people that are stocking up and collecting this and collecting that and hoarding this and hoarding that. And, and I understand, rightfully so, there is fear. God is shutting everything down so that we can turn our eyes on Him. That's when God does His greatest work. When you are down to nothing, God is up to something. Remember that. Say that with me. When, when I am down to nothing, God is up to something. He's up to something in your life. He's up to something in your family. He's up to something in America. We will rebound from this. We will be restored. There will be a resurrection of America. You will see, mark my words, God is on the throne. He's not done with us yet, but He's getting our attention. He's bigger than the coronavirus. He's bigger than the stock market issues. He's bigger than your financial woes. He's a big God. It's big God, little devil. You can't get it twisted. It's not big devil, little God. God is going to work all things together for His good to those that love Him. But our eyes must be upon Him. It must begin on our knees. It must begin by if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, seek my face, I will hear from heaven and heal their land. Pray that with me. Believe that with me that God will heal 
our land if we pray. Listen, those of you that haven't never had the opportunity or maybe never took the opportunity, let me say it that way, to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now is your time. Now is your moment. You don't have to get good to get God. You get God to get good. Let me say that again. You don't have to get good to have God. He'll take you just the way you are. You get God to get good. And God is speaking to you right now. I believe that he's pricking the hearts of so many that are watching me by YouTube or Facebook right now. I mean, he's pricking my heart right now. There's a strong presence of God in this sanctuary. I just want to pray a prayer with you and lead you in a prayer of faith that you might receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The Bible says that if you can't run with the footman, what are you going to do when the horsemen come? If you can't run with this issue, what are you going to do when things really get bad? Because things at some point will get worse. Don't know when, but Christ will be coming back. If you can't run with the footman, what will you do when the horsemen come? But He is your rescuer. He is your hope. I want to pray with you right now. Dear Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you would forgive me of my sin. That you would help me to get off the wide road that has been leading me to destruction and get on the narrow path that leads to life. I repent of my sin and by faith I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And you will help me fight the fear with a new walk of faith. Please come into my life. You, I believe, are the difference maker. I've tried everything else and it never worked. And now I'm finding myself in a point of desperation like the woman with the issue of blood. I reach out, even if I can touch the hem of your garment, I know I will be made well. So heal me, forgive me, rescue me from my own thoughts and from this world. I receive you as Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer uh, with me this morning, please uh, feel free to call when we post this. I'm going to make sure our contact information is up on the screen. Uh, You can call the church office at Pembroke Assembly of God. You can call me on my cell, my wife on the cell. Um, I just, I'm, I'm praying and believing that many that have heard this word this morning will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He wants you to, in your heart, to be able to say, I am not afraid. There's an old song that, that says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. <clears throat> it goes something like this. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future and life is worth the living just because He lives. Because He lives I can face tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone, and because I know He holds the future, now my life is worth the living just because He lives. 
Praise the Lord. God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. Amen.